Good morning, Nevlin Knights. Today is Monday, June 1st, and I'm starting with the book camera because I want to show you the matrix for week 10. Week 10 is June 1st through June 3rd, so we only have three days left of school. Now, usually that last week of school, we do a lot of fun activities, and since this year is distance learning, Mr. Wolf made up the last matrix having to do with some of the things that we do at the end of the school year. Usually we have a spring concert. So there are some activities that you may do. You could design and create an instrument and then he gives you some ideas on how to do it. You could make a kazoo and hum your favorite songs, and he gives you an idea of how to do it. Or you could create your own rain stick. So there are lots of different activities you can do with musical instruments for the spring concert that normally we do, but not this year because of distance learning. Also at the end of the year, we have spring fling. Remember that's when we have the inflatables? <clears throat> Excuse me, and we have the carnival? So these are some things that Mr. Uh, Wolf thought that you may do if you choose to. You could keep jumping. We won't have the inflatables, but you could jump over things in your yard or play leapfrog or things like that. We have follow the leader or copycat. One of you could be the leader and the rest of you could follow along. <clears throat> either like an obstacle course, either inside the house if mom says it's okay, or outside. Or you could create your own dance party. Turn on some music, dance with your family. Um, a fun thing that the fourth graders do in the spring, they do a track and field day. So maybe you could get some family members together and you could play tic-tac-toe games. Best three out of five. See who's the winner, the champion. You could play paper, rock, scissors and have a tournament to see who is the winner for that. Or you could walk around your yard or your block and then you could try skipping or galloping or jogging. You could even maybe tie your legs together and do a three-legged race. That might be kind of fun. Um, some other special events that happened in the spring is our fourth graders usually go to um, the old mill and they learn how to use their manners. And so you might help out and set the table the way it is supposed to be properly set and practice your manners during dinner with please and thank you. Um, our safety patrol usually goes bowling. You could set up your own bowling game. You could use 10 water bottles and a ball and then bowl them over. And then our EL friends go way, well not our friends, but the principal goes way to the top of the roof of the school and they do the annual egg drop. They create a container that protects the egg. So with mom and dad's permission, maybe you could figure out a place around your home and create a container to protect your egg and do your own egg, jo egg drop. Um, field trips in the spring. Fourth graders usually go on a canoe trip and you've already made a boat with um, Mr. Phillips so you could design maybe a canoe this time and see if your boat will sink or see if your boat will float and not sink. Second graders, we usually go to the, um, the historical society at the fairgrounds and we learn about how life was long ago. So you could even um, go online and see what life was like in Austin either 20 or 50 or 100 years ago. I bet there are some historical sites on the internet that could give you information about that. Um, first graders, they learn about living and non-living things at the Nature Center. You guys could go outside and try to find three things that are living and three things that are not living. And then at the end of the year, our little wrap-up, 
You could maybe talk to an adult about your favorite memories from this year. We've kind of done that in our memory book. So maybe you want to just read through your memory book and make sure that you have that all completed. And then maybe you're wondering about next year. Maybe you could talk with mom or dad and jot down some questions that maybe you want to ask your teacher for next year. So maybe when you um, go to your conference next year in the fall, if we have those, you'd be all ready with your questions to ask. And you could talk with an adult about what you're more, most excited about for next year and even what you're more anxious about for next year. It's always a little nerve-wracking moving to the next grade, but it's also very exciting. All right, so remember, these are may-dos. So you can pick any of these that you would like to do, and you can do them this, um, this week, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Also, I want to remind you that Monday today, at between 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock, we are going to have the Joy Ride Parade, where the teachers are going to be walking in the streets. Mr. Wolf sent out a map to your parents so they know where we've been walking. And you can stand outside your house if you live in that area, or you could even just maybe stand outside Nevlin if you don't live in that area, and you can watch and wave to your teachers as we walk by. So that is today from one to three. Alrighty, we have one last math assignment to correct. And then we are done with math for the year. So please get out your page 633, 634, and I just wanna go over it. All right. So number 18, on the clock, the hour hand is between the two and the three. So I put my hour hand between the two and the three, and the minute hand is on the five. So I go back to my smaller hour. So it is two, and then I count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So it is 225. This brain builder, I think we already did this one together. We ended up with 3.05 p.m. So let's skip on down to number 20. Derek has basketball practice at 2.30. So the hour hand is between the two and the three. The minute hand is on the six. 2.30, we would have basketball practice in the afternoon in the p.m. past morning. And then it says Luke has practice two and a quarter hours later. Show the time on the clock. All right, so if Derek's basketball practice is at 2.30 and Luke's is two and a half hours later, there's one hour, two hours, two and a quarter hours later. So then I'm gonna do a quarter hour. Remember how we can cut our clock into four sections then that would be this time on the clock. And if we notice, our hour hand is almost on the five, but not quite. And we have 45 minutes past the hour of four. It's still four o'clock. So our time would be 4.45, and it is still p.m. Okay. Test practice. The boat picked up passengers every half hour. If the first boat arrives at 8 a.m., then the fourth boat will arrive what time? So remember I told you to make your four slots. So we have 8 o'clock is the first pickup. Half an hour later would be 8.30 is the second pickup. Another half an hour from 8.30 would be 9 o'clock is the third pickup. And then the fourth pickup would be 9.30. And they are all a.m. because we started at a.m. here at the beginning. So 9.30 a.m. Right. Turn your paper over. How do we use and tell time? So we're going to show the time on the analog clock. It's 4 o'clock on the digital clock. So four o'clock on the analog clock, the hour hand is pointing at the four, 
the minute hand is directly up at the top on the 12. So that is 4 o'clock. What time is it on the, on the analog clock? The hour hand is between the 10 and the 11, so we go back to the hour of 10. And when your minute hand is on the 6, it's half past 10 or 10.30. We're going to skip count and tell the time. The hour hand is between the 9 and the 10. We go back to the first to the earlier hour. So we know that it is 9. And then we're going to count by fives to get the minute hand. So we start up here at the 12. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. It is 9.35. Draw the hands, write the time. So we have a quarter past five. Remember we can divide that clock into quarters. Quarter is one of four. So quarter past five, my hour hand goes on the five to show the hour. And then if I go a quarter of the way around the clock, that gets me to the three. So the minute hand is on the three. Another way of saying this is 5.15, quarter after 5, 5.15. The next one says half past 5. Alrighty, so if it's half past, my hour hand is going to be in the middle of the 5 and the 6, and then Half past means that it's halfway around the clock. The minute hand is going to be on the six. So that is half past five, or another way of saying that is 5.30. Alrighty, I hope you did well, and I hope you enjoyed your unit on time. Okay, we're gonna move over to the regular camera for a story. I'll see you in a little bit. Okay. I thought I would uh, read to you a story today. It's a kind of a fun book. It's called The Worst Alphabet Book Ever. Now, some of our words in English are kind of tricky to spell because we've got silent letters or we borrow it from a different language and their spelling is a little bit different than, than the way we spell it here in America. And so this book is a good example of all of these crazy spellings and, um, and how you say these words. I had to go online to figure out how to say some of these to make sure I was saying them correctly. So, our story today, P is for pterodactyl. You don't say the P. The P is silent. Pterodactyl. The worst alphabet book ever. Did you know that there are some really wacky words that start with a silent letter? I'm going to take this jacket off. Most of the time, you can just ignore that pesky first letter and sound out the rest of the word. But be careful. There are other words in this book that don't follow the rules. So for, for English, we, we have all of these rules for spelling and phonics, and then there are all of these words that don't follow the rules. These are those words. So let's begin with A. I'm gonna switch you over so you can see these. A is for aisle. The bread aisle has not been cleaned in eons and nine tiny beasts meet to have a feast. So we have lots of silent A's there. B is for delium. We doubt, we doubt anyone knows what delium is, but it's the only word dumb enough to begin with a silent B. 
So we have these words doubt, dumb, delium, that all have bees in them, but you don't say the bees. Delium is a liquid that comes from a tree that grows in Africa and Asia. C is for czar. Shh. The fascinating czar is secretly part Czech. So czar sounds like it would start with the Z, doesn't it? And then here's our word Czech. That doesn't look like Czech, but that's how you say it. D is for Jabuti. The boat race begins when the handsome judge from Jabuti drops his handkerchief from the bridge. Handkerchief, bridge, Jabuti. Silent D's in those words, but you have to spell it with it in there or it's spelled wrong. E is for you. Eileen, the you, was so euphoric the wolves were eaten, she even gave the eulogy. So they're at a funeral for the wolves, and when somebody gives the eulogy, they talk about the person who has died. Eulogy. E is for you. F is not for photo, phlegm, phooey, or phone. All of those have the F sound, but they begin with the PH spelling. F is only for photo when you speak fluent Spanish at home. So if you are a Spanish speaker and the word makes an F sound, they spell it with an F. But in English, we use the PH to make an F sound. Crazy. G is for Neoki. The gnome yells, waiter, there's a bright white gnat nibbling on my Neoki. The silent G. Neoki is like a, it's like fried, fried potatoes that make like a noodle. Neoki. And then we have gnat, gnawing. H is for air. The honest air admits that herbalism isn't his cup of tea. An heir is a relative of yours, somebody who's related to you. Or it's like, it's like your son, somebody you pass down things to. I is not for I. We asked the pirate if he has two eyes and he said, I, I. So this says I, this says I. Crazy. Crazy but fun. J is for highly. Juanita and Bjorn happily played highly before eating fajitas in Juarez. So the J is silent. And in Spanish, sometimes the J makes an H sound. K is for knight. The noble knight's knife nicked the knave's knee. So look at all those K-N words. We don't say the K. The K is silent. K-N just makes the N sound. L is not for L. An elephant named L rode the L train halfway to El Paso and dined on hearts of palm with her folks. We don't say the L in those words, kind of like the word walk. 
We don't say L in that word either. M is for mnemonic. But now Mr. M can't remember why. Mnemonics is when you make up a word to help you remember information that is difficult. So here are the names of the Great Lakes. There are one, two, three, four, five. And they spell out the word home. So the first letter. So we have H for Huron, O for Ontario, M for Michigan, E for Erie, and S for Superior. So if you can remember homes, then you can remember the names of the Great Lakes. And I think people do that with the names of the planets too. They use a mnemonic device. Okay. This is really a, a good thing to remember to use when you're trying to memorize information. N is not for not. N is for naughty children who will sing a solemn hymn when autumn comes to an end. All of these ends, we didn't say, did we? They were all silent. And then there we have that K-N again, like in night. O is for Ouija. The French leopard says, We, we'd love to play Ouija with the wee witch from Oaxaca. So this is the word we, Ouija, Oaxaca. Makes a W sound, but spelled with an O. Crazy. And from our title, P is for pterodactyl. Ptolemy, the psychic pterodactyl, struggles with psoriasis. So all of these P's are silent. We don't say them. Ptolemy. Hmm. Q is for quinoa. We can enjoy quinoa and quiche by the keys of cutter. So these all make a, K, a, a, a hard K sound. Quinoa, keys, quiche. And this word here is pronounced cutter. It's a country. R is not for R. In England, the Queen proclaims, We aren't saying the R's in butterfly, shark, or lizard. They don't say them the way we say them. They kind of leave out the R sound. S is for C's. Cece swam through the debris in the seas to see the imaginary Isle of New Arkansas. So we're missing our R's over here and our S's over here are silent, like the word debris. We spell it with that S, but we don't say it. T is for tsunami. The charging tsunami washed away all of Tchaikovsky's tchotchkes. So we don't say the T. Tchotchkes are these little decorations that he normally had on his piano. U is not for you. You never could have guessed that the wolf was disguised as the U. So now we're going back to the funeral. And remember the you giving the eulogy? She was a wolf in sheep's clothing. She was dressed as a you. This kind of you, E-W-E. One, two, three, four, five. V is for five. These are called Roman numerals. 
How romantic, Roman, romantic. So five, the V is number five in the Roman counting numbers. W is for Wren. The Wren wrapped the rabbit's gift in red, but forgot to write a note. So the WR, the W is silent, and you just say the R sound. X is for xylophone. Xavier's extra arm made him an exceptional xylophone player. So the X sounds like a Z. Xavier, xylophone. I'm sorry about my phone. Y is not for Y. But Eve, who is wearing yellow shorts, yells, Why is the Eiffel Tower upside down? So there is Eve, spelled like that, but pronounced Eve. Z is for Givago. Good night, Givago the zebra. I've enjoyed our rendezvous. Z. So here, the Z sounds like a G, Givago. Doesn't make the Z sound. And that is our book of silent letters. Not a very good alphabet book, but we sure enjoyed it. Thanks, Sample Knights. I will talk to you again tomorrow.